All right. Well, it's one of my favorite times. It's time to read the sun. Why do we read the Cornell Daily Sun? Why do we read this rag? No, it's not a rag. Independence since 1880. Good paper. The point is because if you work for Shamin Hotels, and I don't know about other places down here, you work for an Ivy League son of a gun, and they behave differently. They approach this world differently. Even when they were kids, they just are different. Um, you love sports. We never do sports. We're going to do a sports article from the sun. Let's see. Men's basketball set to face Ivy League foes on the road. This is by uh, Corey Bennett, Sun Sports Editor. <laughs> Tone, do you know Corey Bennett? Yeah, he's a fraternity brother of mine. Of course I know Corey Bennett. I know all these people. It's, I'm telling you, these networks, man, right? Uh, last weekend, the men's ba basketball team made history with blowout wins over Brown and Yale. This weekend, as the team travels to Penn and Princeton, the Red could make history again with two wins regardless of the margin of victory. Traditionally, the toughest road trip for any Ivy League basketball team, the Penn-Princeton road trip has put many winning streaks to test to rest since the ancient eight's inception in 1956. After sweeping each team last year, however, Cornell 14-6, 4-0 Ivy, could become the first ever squad to sweep the Penn Princeton road trip in back to back seasons. Uh, you also see a picture of another article by Keenan Weatherford, who eventually became editor in chief of the sun. Is Keenan a fraternity brother of mine? Yes. My goodness. Wake up and, you know, smell the coffee, right? These networks are, they're very powerful and they're very interesting. And they're also very silly, but they are real. And they're also, you know, I don't know. They're silly, but they're not right. Like, you know, these youngsters are practicing at 20 years old, how to write a paper. They're practicing how to get there, you know, out there um, and sort of own and run life. And then they do. And you, you know, you, this is what they behave like as a 20 year old. Imagine what they're up to today. These are powerful minded folks with a lot of talent uh, and heavy caliber, you know, individuals when it comes to ability to build and run companies. So they are different than you. They do not relate to working people very rarely. And even if they did come from working backgrounds, uh, they forget about it because, again, they're graduating, they're making lots of money. They lose that connection very quickly. Although Corey Bennett doesn't, I can speak, uh, I'll say something you know, nice about him. I'm still friends with him, friendly, very friendly with him. Um, he's a good guy. He has not lost touch. So, shout out to great sports article from the Sun. My point is, uh, you know, again, these folks that have access to education capital, which they often translate into financial and social capital, but certainly they've got elite academic capital. That's very powerful, right? That's like, you know, liquid gold. And they translate it into, as we showed yesterday, you know, on VPAP, they buy these politicians. They control the media. Remember, Richmond.com, Richmond Times Dispatch, right? It's, the building is... Where Shamin Hotels is. Neil Amin owns the building. Come on. Neil Amin, Penn, Wharton. Uh, which brings us to another thing that we're going to do every day, too, when we talk about these Ivy League schools. The motto of the day. Because, again, uh, you know, I want everybody to learn Latin. Yours truly, uh, I got a perfect score in the National Latin exam when I was a kid. So real nerd shit. I love Latin. I don't know Spanish. I don't know French. I probably should, but I do remember a bit of Latin. I would show you my Cassell's Latin dictionary, but it's holding up my TV. So, uh, you know, most of the good schools in the world, certainly seven of the eight Ivy League schools, have Latin mottos. One shitty, shitty Ivy League college doesn't have a Latin motto. I wonder which one that is. So here you see the coat of arms for the University of Pennsylvania, approved in 1932. Um, adopted in 33. The arms memorialized two important influences in the founding, Ben Franklin and the Penn family, right? William Penn, right? Um, my goodness. But the motto, you can see it here, Leges sine moribus vene. The university motto is Latin phrase Leges sine moribus vene, which translate into English as laws without morals are useless. Attributed to Provost William Smith. I love that. 
So we're going to hold that up there while I ramble for a minute because this is really important. Legat sine moribus fine, right? Gosh, think about that a lot. Um, because, you know, you all worship the law. You love the law. You're like, man, I know the law. We talk about this every time. I got a hot take on the law. Let me tell you what the law needs to be doing. We need the Republicans. We need the Democrats. We need this. Everybody's got a fucking philosophy about the law. The truth is this. This is the one of the best mottos out there. A law without a moral is useless, right? Used to be a law. True story. It used to be a law. I'm going to remind you this every day. People that look like me, dark skin, your property. People that have, you know, womanly body parts can't vote. You're not a person. That's the law. That was the law up until 1865, 1960 something. That was the law. You love the law. The law has said for a long time that people are property, you know, just recently changed. And even now, it's still not good, right? So stop worshiping the law. It's a work in progress. I don't know. It's a thing. You all like to talk about it. You put a lot of effort into it. But truly, a law without morality is in vain. Laws without morals are useless. So, you know, one of the things I remember when you, you know, I worked for Neil Amin and Shamin Hotels, is they would always say, well, we follow the law. And they do. You know, they follow the law. They pay the right amount of taxes according to the law. They don't pay one penny more. We just talked about what a penny make, difference makes. But, um, you know, they follow the law, right? It's, it's legal to fire me for organizing people. It's perfectly legal to fire people because you don't like their hair color. You don't like their skin, whatever. Uh, you can do it. There's many ways around it. Because, again, one of my main points, and you're not listening, but maybe one day you will. Who writes the law? Well, we just did a fucking 15-minute segment on who writes the law. It's all these white people that get bought and paid for by people that went to Penn. Come on. The law is useless without morality behind it. So who cares? Um, you heard it from first from the University of Pennsylvania. Again, Neil Amin's alma mater. A law without mor morals is useless. And that guy loves following a bunch of useless laws so good motto okay school bad business school but truly just remember the law is written by the people we we just showed they don't care about you most of them leges sine moribus vene leges means law sine means without moribus you know <laughs> morality with morality, without in this case, without morality, vain, like vain, in vain. It's in vain. It's vanity. 